In this practical, we're going to give you a contaminated water sample, and one of the things we want you to find out is just how many bacteria it contains. You might think this would be as easy as just plating out the contents onto an agar plate and seeing how many colonies grow. However, if we do this, what will probably happen is there'll be too many colonies to count, and if the colonies grow into each other, then we can't count them accurately. We therefore need a way to dilute the sample enough so that we can count individual colonies and work out how many colony forming units were present in the original sample. Remember, not all bacterial cells in the sample will be able to grow on this particular type of agar, so you should call them colony forming units or CFUs throughout. Don't call them cells because the two things aren't quite the same. We're going to do this by setting up a serial dilution. The basic principle is we're going to set up a series of tubes, each of which contains a more dilute version of the sample. We'll then plate each different dilution onto a different agar plate and allow the bacteria to grow overnight. Then hopefully one of those plates will have between 20 and 100 colonies, which is a good number to count. We can then work out from the system how many colony forming units were present in the original sample. To do this, we're going to make up several tenfold dilutions. So this means we'll add one part of the sample to nine parts of a diluting liquid so that the new tube is ten times more dilute than the previous one. So for example, if the original sample had 100,000 colony forming units in it, the new one should have 10,000 colony forming units. We'll call this the 10 to the minus 1 dilution. 10 to the minus 1 means exactly the same thing as 1 divided by 10, but biologists usually express dilutions in the exponential notation, so make sure you're happy with this. In our case, we'll take 0.1 mL of the sample and add it to 0.9 mL of sterile nutrient broth, and this is our first dilution. However, if we play this dilution out, we might still have too many colonies to count, so we're going to have to set up another dilution. The easiest way to do this is to do exactly the same thing again, but this time to dilute the 10 to the minus 1 dilution by tenfold to give a 10 to the minus 2 dilution. So we'll take 0.1 mL of the 10 to the minus 1 dilution and add it to a fresh 0.9 mL of sterile nutrient broth. So this has now been diluted 100 times compared to the original sample. So we'd expect this sample to have 1,000 colony forming units in it. We can keep doing this again and again to set up a series of dilutions. In the practical, you'll make dilutions from 10 to the minus 1 to 10 to the minus 4. You'll then spread 0.1 mL of each dilution onto a separate agar plate. In the second practical, you'll then count the colonies that grow on each plate. Remember, you're going to need to have between 20 and 100 colonies on at least one of the plates to get an accurate indication of the number of colony forming units. Any more than that, and there'll just be too many colonies to count, but counts below 20 tend to be quite inaccurate. It just becomes a matter of chance as to whether you get, say, 4 or 6 bacteria on the plate, but that might mean that you get quite significant errors in your calculations. Make sure you've understood how serial dilutions work before you take the pre-practical quiz. There's going to be questions on this important technique in here. Rewatch the video as many times as you like to make sure that you've really understood it.